So Cavendish has finally won a stage in the tour after like what a five year absence from 2016 onwards. Absolute scenes. I can't believe it. It's unbelievable news. And we're going to go through how he won it and then also maybe why it wasn't as big as it could have been. But anyway, we'll go th just go through the stages for the little screenshots as we like to call them straight away. So Cavendish is pretty far back at this point. He's just over here where my mouse is, like fourth wheel or something. So, you know, not too close. Then we'll keep going. Brent Van Moore's up the road. Cavendish realises basically the man you need to be on is Jasper Philipson. They have the best lead out. Hop on his wheel. So he's just about hop round Cease Bowl, who's around here. Another 10 out of 10 useless sprint two will win two stages a year, probably. Um, then we'll go on the next slide. He managed to hop in between Cease Bowl and Brent Van Moore. Very good move, this. Because I think it was it, it could have the door could have got closed there where he wouldn't have been allowed to go through. But Cav obviously has massive balls, doesn't care about crashing and will make the make the dodgy move when he needs to, um, in order to get onto Phillipson wheel. And as soon as Phillipson launches, it's his ticket to victory. Phillipson is actually the strongest on the day, um, apart from Cav. So Cav's just on the wheel being like, This is ideal, getting a perfect lead out. Um and everyone else is miles back here. You got like Sagan, he's so far back. Then we got like I Laporte, I guess, Van Poffel, Greipel's not even on the screen, he's going to get a top 10, Pedersen, it's just not not great, uh, and then we go on the next slide, and it's pretty obvious here, Cavendish is now going to step off his wheel and take the W, Cav is off the wheel and is about to take the W, and then obviously we all know what happens, Cav does step off the wheel and take the W, but I think, now obviously it's a very exciting stage, Cavendish is one, I'm absolutely buzzed, but I think it is a, maybe... Well, we'll talk about two things, but number one, potentially, like, actually, it's not as important as you think it is because he didn't actually beat very many good sprinters. Like, Merlier, I don't know why they didn't lead out for him, Alphys and Benix. They just whacked in, uh, what's his face? Philipson, who is good, but he's not, like, a 10 out of 10 sprinter. Cease Bowl is Cease Bowl. I don't think he's very good. He needs, like, a perfect lead out, man. He weighs, like, 99 kilos, and I just don't really rate him as a sprinter very much. Like, yeah, he won the stage in Paranese this year, but I still... Not a huge fan of him, to be honest. Buani's Buani. He's top. He's like a good sprinter. He'll win the French Classics, but he's never, ever going to win the, a tour stage, I reckon. Uh, he's come close this year. Maybe he will, but I, I really think it's quite unlikely. Then you've got like, Laporte. He's all right. You've got Matthews, who is decent. He was a decent bunch sprinter back in the day, in like 2017. Sagan, so but he's never won a bunch sprint in the tour, and um, I think that's always going to continue. Like a flat bunch sprint, like he's just not that good at. Like he's good, but he's not that good. So potentially Cavendish's win was actually not too unheard of because he had, didn't have to beat too many good people. I think him going Merlier would be harder. I mean, obviously he beat Merlier a fair amount in the Tour of Turkey, so potentially he could do the same thing. But I think it wouldn't be as easy as um, it, th today was. Today was just too easy for the boy. The boy just but dusted everyone off like it was prime 2010. I think, you know, we've, we've definitely had better sprint, tra sprint um, competitions like back in the day when there was sort of like Bennett, and then you also had like Viviani, Ewan, like Groenewegen, and there was like them four, and they all took like a stage each, I think it was like 2019, that was sort of like a good old days, but I think now actually, well, with Wout van Aert not going for sprints, and like everyone just not really having a great sprint train, because a lot of people are going for GC or just like random stages, um, I don't think Nick Zolo's here, or maybe he is, but he doesn't seem to have got to any sprints, and the other man we're missing off is Demar. DeMar doesn't seem to get to this sprint. He is actually very quick, and I think he could bag Cavendish. But again, he doesn't seem to be able to get to the final of races. However, on the other hand, we could be finish the video on more of an upbeat note. I think it's huge that Cavs won. He obviously hasn't actually won a stage in the Tour since 2016. Um, he didn't win a pro race until this year, until 2017. It was like Dubai Tour Stage 2 and beat like Nizzolo and Buani or someone. So it wasn't exactly a huge win for him then. But I think it's unbelievable that Cav managed to come back. It obviously shows the power of the Turkic quick step. Um, Ivan Van Mol, etc., etc. Those who know who will know what I'm talking about. Um, but yeah, like he is absolutely outrageous how he's managed to come back from basically not thinking that he wouldn't be a pro ever again. Never really compete races. Like last year, he didn't really compete in any bunch sprints at all. And then now, he's winning a stage in the Tour. It's absolutely bonkers. And then I guess last final point is: Will he manage to beat Eddie Merckx's record? I think it could happen. I think it could happen. There's a lot of sprint stages here. He needs three more to t tie, which I think could happen. Uh, and then maybe next year we'll get allowed to go to the tour again. You never know. Uh, but it's definitely going to be exciting to see what Cav can do the, the, for the rest of the tour. 
But having said that, winning one stage is just huge. It's unbelievable. And um, you must be so, so happy. So anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you have enjoyed my video. And we'll see you in the next one.